we're going to take a look at the slope formula. Engineers and biologists will use the slope formula to determine how quickly water is draining from a reservoir or how fast the coastline in Florida is disappearing. And hopefully we'll have some time we can talk about Easter Island and how that coastline is disappearing and threatening the statues that have been there for thousands of years. So um, what could the rate of change tell developers who want to build along Florida's Gold Coast? So there's something to think about. So remember, the slope of a line is the ratio of the difference between two y values and the difference between two x values. So you always want to write the formula down first. So you can write down your slope is m, and you can have y minus y1, x minus x1. This is your change in y, your delta y over your delta x. The way that you're going to figure this out is you're looking at your points 4, 5, and 2, 2. I always start by putting the fraction bar and then throwing in those minus signs because when we start to get negatives for the coordinates, it's going to make a huge difference. So I have 4, 5, and we're just going to do a little identifying. We have x and y. We have x and y. I'm going to use this as my y and x, and I'll use this as my x sub 1, y sub 1. So y goes on top, we have 5, and that's going to get matched up with the 2. Then your x, we have 4 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. So your rate of change, your slope, is 3 over 2. Keep it as 3 over 2. Don't change it to 1.5 or 1 and a half because it's just going to make it harder down the road. Let's take a look at some examples. So we're going to find the slope between the points 6, 1 and 3, 2. So I know that I need to do my delta y over delta x, and I'm just putting that in there right now. So I'm going to my change in y's, here's my y values. I'm going to put the 1 first and the 2 second, which means that I have to put the 6 first because it's the same ordered pair. 6 and 3. And I have 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. So we have negative 1 third. If you reverse these and you did 2 minus 1 and 3 minus 6, you're going to end up with 1 over negative 3. Negative 1 over 3 is the same as 1 over negative 3. Because if you did this division, it would be negative 0.3 repeating no matter which way that you plugged it in. Let's take a look at the next one. 4 and negative 2, and then we have negative 1, 2. Now this is why it's important to um, set up your fraction bar with those minus signs. So here's what, what you're going to have here. So um, we have negative 2 and 2. And now we have 4 and this is the tricky part, negative 1. This is where if you don't put that minus sign in immediately, you might actually just say 4 minus 1. And it will throw off your problem because this is negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. And, neg and 4 minus negative 1 becomes 4 plus 1, which is 5. So you have negative 4 fifths for this problem. Next one is negative 3, negative 7, and 0, negative 2. So I'm putting in those minus signs, and I'm going to start off. These are my y's. We have negative 7 minus negative 2, and then we have negative 3 minus 0, which becomes negative 7 plus 2 which is negative 5, and negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. Those two negatives will make it a positive, which gives you 5 thirds as your answer. Now here's another way to find the slope from an equation if it is in standard form which if you remember is ax plus by equals c. 
And so what you're doing here is you're using the intercepts. So if you want to go ahead and use cover-up method, 6x minus 5y is 30, go ahead and cover up that 6x. You get y is negative 6, which then transfers over to that as an ordered pair. And then if you go ahead and look at covering up the negative 5y, you end up getting your x-intercept as 5, which turns into that ordered pair. And then you can use the slope formula, change in y over change in x. And I'm going to write that in there so I don't forget. And my y's, I have negative 6 minus 0 and then 0 minus 5. We end up with negative 6 over negative 5, which is 6 fifths. Go ahead and find the slope of the line described by 2x plus 3y equals 12 using intercepts. And you'll have a question pop up and you can put in your answer there. Lastly, we have the rate of change in a real-world application on a graph. You are going to have to draw these graphs in because they did not come through on the download. So here you have time in days and height in centimeters. So what do we notice is the rate of change? So if you take a look at your slope, which we talked about as rise over run, and if you go ahead and make that little triangle, you are rising one, and you are running two. Okay, so what does that mean? The rise is your y value. So that has to do with your height. So let's say the height increases one centimeter four is like the fraction bar for how long? every two days you could say for every two days the height increases one centimeter or the height increases one centimeter for every two days now in the bottom one um, you really can't just count because of the way that the graph is set up. So, um, the x axis is the altitude in miles, the y axis is the temperature in Fahrenheit, and each degree is 10 degrees, so it's 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, so, let's go ahead and actually find the slope here. We're going to have to do uh, delta y over delta x. And your y values would be 54 and 36. And your x values would be 1 and 4. So you end up with 18 over negative 3, which is negative 6. So what does this mean? This means that as the altitude is increasing, the temperature is decreasing by 6 degrees. Remembering that this negative 6 is actually negative 6 over 1. And so that's why you will have the y value on top, which is where your decrease in temperature. And even though down here you've got a negative 3, when you simplify, the negative 6 is where the negative is, and if you think about it, you can't have your, um, your altitude is not decreasing in the graph, which is why you always have to simplify. The rate of change from a graph is a little bit trickier because you have to really look at the labels and think about how you're going to set up your sentence, but we will do some more practice in class.